out on this one. Referee just making the final checks. As we go back to RMC. Public, give it up for Kelvin Sequesa. And across the ring, his opponent boxing out of the blue corner, wearing all blue with white trim, representing the Netherlands. Give it up for James Delano, your referee at the bell, Mr. Billy McDonald. So, men's light middleweight category 71 kilos to say i've got gb boxer lewis richardson alongside me who competes in this category won't be fighting until tomorrow in this competition but this is set Round to be one. a pretty good contest because both come to this with plenty of pedigree kelvin sequesa the fighter from the czech republic fighting in red four-time national champion goes by the alias of golden boy so let's see if he lives up to that. And of course, Delano from the Netherlands, fighting out of the blue corner, six times national champion. So both had great success in their domestic national competitions. Let's see what they can uh, bring here. Having seen Sequesa before, a lovely, accurate backhand. He's technically nice and tidy fighter. Should be an intriguing contest, this one. Yeah, both have started quite positively. Um, Delano more on the front foot, um, but both hands are nice and nice and nice and high. Nothing, um, nothing too big being landed yet. But both started positively. Good hook there from the check. He's uh, a popular character in the Netherlands, Delano. He's a personal trainer and motivational speaker. So as he set out in 2009 with the, the sole goal of becoming the Dutch champion. He lost in the finals three times in a row. Um, and then people were saying to him, maybe he should quit and do something else. But that just wasn't in his, his, his character. He carried on and then finally won the national title in 2017. And since then has gone on to win six Dutch titles. So that in itself is a, a good example, isn't it, of that resilience and that mentality that uh, athletes can often bring. His next target, of course, is Paris 2024. He appeared in a documentary called The Last Chance in the Netherlands last November, which was about his journey to try and qualify for the Olympics. He's got, um, he had a long-term injury back in uh, 2022. He has been in Sheffield before for training camps and sparring as, as recently as March last year. So how, do, how much does that help being part of international training camps, Lewis, where you get to fight different styles and have lots of rounds in, in that short space of time? Yeah, it's a brilliant experience and it, mim it very much mimics the tournament format um, with the add-on of additional training sessions alongside those with our track work and our strength conditioning work. So, um, but the sparring, the international sparring is, yeah, it's, it's, it's valuable, very, very valuable. Um, I've never actually sparred either of these, but um, I've seen, seen Delano on numerous camps and numerous competitions. Um, they're both tidy fighters, aren't they? Yeah. Fairly clean lines, technically sound, that, that, you know, nice to watch. But it's who would you say has got the edge here? Could you could you pick anybody? It's, it's a really close round, actually. I think as we enter the last sort of 20 seconds, um, it's still still to play for. You'd have to say Delano's probably finished stronger, um, but I'd say the check started started stronger. So it's just what the judges remember more, to be honest, and what they prefer. Nice range of shots that we're seeing. Definitely. from the Dutch fighter as well, landed a lovely backhand uppercut there as well and that's something else that judges will look for, I mean the, the, the 10 points uh, must system is scored on a variety of, of, of things, sort of you know, ringmanship and dominant p ring position and um, obviously the way that they apply themselves in the fight but, but you know, one of the things that is eye-catching is, is the shots that you land in the variety of shots in your arsenal isn't it of course i mean that's the most important thing everything else is sort of an add-on you know if you're landing eye-catching uh, shots with with you know with strong impact then that's what the judges, our judges are going to remember most um but that was actually a really competitive round it's quite hard to score um we're not seeing the scorecards and i don't think you are at home either so um it's nice to, it's nice to see because sometimes we do get have access to that but this um, this brings a bit more suspense to it, so it's quite nice to 
to have. We've seen some sequence. nice uh, replay Second action challenge. here of those exchanges. Um, both. Second fairly, round! Fairly even in those exchanges, I'd say, in terms of shots landed. And again, lots of uh, areas of blows landed on target areas, domination of the bout, technical and tactical superiority, all of those things will factor in when judges make their decision on who they give the 10 point they've both, uh, round started, two. started very strong here. Yeah, I think both fighters suggest, know they've got to which <laughs> stamp their authority on this a, one. It was a uh, close to... Yeah, close to fought first round. So I do believe the corners are getting access to the uh, to the scorecards in between rounds. So they will know. So the fighters will know whether they're up or down on that round. And it would suggest that it was uh, it was fairly competitive and close. Do you like to know that information as a fighter? Yeah, definitely. I think um, internationally, where where we've been on the circuit for quite a while now, I'm used to having a scorecard uh, in between rounds. So. Initially, it can throw you off a little bit when maybe you think you've won a first round or you think you've lost and, you know, it goes the other way. But, um, yeah, with that experience gained, I, I, I think it's positive to know. It's different now to the old system, of course, which used to be points, literally, where you could be winning sort of 20 points to five in a round. And you didn't necessarily want that information either way, because if you know that you're miles ahead, it's perhaps not great for a fighter. And if you're miles behind, whereas... You know, usually coaches would just say you're up or you're down. <laughs> they wouldn't tell you by quite how many points if there was a, a, a big margin. But now, of course, it's just round by round. And, and that's why it can it can look unfair sometimes to people when somebody, you know, when a, close is, a fight has been very, very close, but it looks wide on the scorecards because one fighter might just have edged each round yeah. despite them being close. Well, it's a subjective sport, you know. Obviously, we've got five judges there, but they, they can all sort of see around differently, so... It's when they are close rounds and a close rounds like this and like the, the, the first round was close and the second round has been highly competitive as well I do like Delano's on the front foot his ring position is better more positive um, but at the same time the check is also landing some good shots um, I just like the work from Delano getting on top of his opponent there he looks like he's pressing the fight and there's something the judges like to see see that you know some big the, shots yeah. landed there from Delano. He's just outworking his opponent at the moment. Um, Czech Republic's just slowing, his pace has slowed a little bit and Delano's has, uh, has stayed high. It just keeps coming, Delano, as well, doesn't he? He's got a, almost a constant work rate, which is really difficult when they're constantly coming at you. He's, he's switching his stance sometimes as well, boxing out of the southpaw position momentarily here and now, and he sustains those attacks. He just keeps coming forward, ploughing his way through, and no matter what Sequesa throws back, he's, he's not able to deter Delano from these attacks. Yeah, I'd just like to see Sequesa's feet be a little bit um, a little bit faster, be a bit a lot more light on his feet if he was going to run the back foot like this. Um, you'd have to say Delano's probably taken that round um, after a very close first round, but... Um, yeah, if, if I was judging that, I'd go for, um, for Delano for that second round. Well, it certainly was um, a, a close round, but it does seem that the Dutchman Delano went up a notch there, just turned it up a gear, perhaps, against the Czech Republic fighter Sequest, who we've seen in the replay there, an example of that Delano pressure. He just comes forward, keeps marauding forward, throwing shots. Quite as to how powerful and heavy those shots are. They're enough. Only Sequesa will know, but yeah. Sequesa doesn't seem to have a, 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 a shot that contains the type of power that De Delano can respect. And, and by that, I mean to, to not go, not go, you know, he's not, he's not deterring him from Second forward. Out. Yeah, definitely. And that's why I'd like to see his, fast, uh, his feet a little bit faster. Third um, and final round. If he doesn't, he doesn't want to, you know, have that knockout power. If he doesn't have that knockout power, I'd like to see his feet just moving a little bit more. But it's easier said than done. Trust me. <laughs> Being in there when uh, when you've got a, an opponent just coming forward, coming forward like that, and it's, it's easier said than done. So difficult, isn't it? And sometimes your brain is telling you to do it, and you know what you've got to do, and your body just can't. Yeah. It's um, and a nice hook there, Sequesa. Yeah. And, and sometimes you're in a fight where you're giving it everything, you've followed the instructions that the coaches are giving you, and you're just in against a, a better or more experienced fighter on the day, and, and nothing you do is, is quite coming off. It's uh, the, the whole point, of course, is to just keep going, keep trying to make those little adjustments and finding your moments of success.
to develop and learn along the way, which is very much what the amateur game is yeah. and ought to be about. Yeah, you'd have to say Delano's um, probably his experience is just paying off a little bit here. He's coming a bit square on, but Sequess is not able to sort of nullify that too well at the moment um, or to or take advantage of that. So I'd just like to see Sequesta hold the centre of the ring a little bit here. But he, just, well, he, steps, he, he brings that right foot in with him, doesn't he, the Dutch fighter? When yeah, he throws yeah. that backhand, sometimes, as, as you've rightly pointed out, he's almost completely square on, as we've just seen there in that position. When yeah. he brings that backhand with that right foot round, he's, he's really open to... He would be off balance if, yeah, if the Czech fighter yeah. could land at the same time and time it, then yeah. he did catch him. Definitely. So he's just letting him into his space too easily here. So Press is getting tired now and Delano's able to walk through and he's not got anything to think about on the way in. It's still competitive, it's still a close round, but um, you'd have to say that Delano is um, probably from the midway point in round two that he's got on top of this fight and uh, had took control of it after a very, very close sort of round and a half. It's been almost constant pressure from the Dutchman in blue. And bulldozing forward, letting his hands go. The Czech Republic fighter has applied himself well, though. He's doing his best. He's uh, having moments of success as well. He's, he's had the better of some of the exchanges. Yeah. Definitely. Very much been on the back foot as he finds himself now in slightly in, different territory. Yeah, in a good position. Can he maintain that centre ring? Yeah. No, he goes straight back onto the back foot and ends up against the ropes as the Dutchman pushes him back once again. This will be a great learning fight for the Czech Republic fighter. Um, he'll learn a lot from this. He'll go away, and um, yeah, just, just he'll learn. He'll learn more from from maybe not getting the decision here. If he if he isn't to not get the decision, he may still get it. But um, yeah, you'd have to say Delano is definitely finishing stronger here. Well, he's certainly the more dominant fighter, and he's looking for a big finish as he pushes Sequesta up against the ropes. Continues to force his way forward, falling a bit short with that one. Yeah. But um, very, certainly very a dominant performance from the Dutchman, who his work rate was relentless, continually coming forward, putting pressure on the Czech Republic fighter. And I think sometimes, Lewis, I don't know about you, but sometimes I would have my, my best learnings when I watched the footage back, because sometimes when you're in the fight, you can't see the things that you're doing particularly well or that you need to do better and then you watch it back and it clicks yeah. wow that's what the coach is saying definitely especially after a few days as well when emotions have uh, have gone down a little bit so uh, yeah it's good to see it with a clear head and we're quite fortunate up Sheffield we have um, with GB Boxing we have a good very very strong performance analysis team who are very supportive and yeah provide us with a lot you know, it certainly makes a difference doesn't it when you're able to watch it back with the coaches let's go for the official Okay, ladies and gentlemen, band number three, you please show your appreciation for both boxers. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. We officials at the ringside score a split decision in favour of your winner. Boxing out of the red corner, it's Kelvin Sequesa. A round of applause, both boxers. Well, that's us told then, Lewis. What yeah. do we know, eh? <laughs> what do we know? That's the first um, upset of the day, could we call it? Or just uh, definitely something I didn't see coming from ringside. Um, but as we said, you know, the, the first the first round was very, very close. I'm sure that would have went to red. And the, f the, the first half of the second round, and maybe a bit more than the second round, was, was close as well. So, um, yeah, maybe the... The opponent in red um, got the first two rounds there. Well, an interesting one that we thought the Dutchman had taken that one, but the judges saw it differently. A split decision, so not all judges were in agreement, but the majority went to the Czech Republic fighter, Kelvin Golden Boy Sequesa, who now will progress through to the next round. Indeed, in Lewis Richardson's weight category, as we go to our MC now to introduce.